Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I am thrilled to have the second guest episode or second episode with a guest on this channel. Uh, Peter Pikarchik is joining me today to talk about a topic that I used to understand, no longer understand, and want to re-understand, which is uh, Reason ML, Rescript. I'm so confused, I don't even know what it's called. But hello, Peter. How are you? Who are you? Uh, hello. Harry, thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, as Harry mentioned, my name is Peter Pikarczyk. I am the co-founder and CTO of DraftBit. If you haven't heard of DraftBit, we are uh, what Paul Graham called us the Webflow for mobile. Uh, we build uh, React Native and Expo apps right in the browser. You get access to all the source code, no strings attached. That's a pretty fancy thing. So essentially you can make your entire React Native application uh, without leaving the comfy couch that is the browser. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's pretty fancy. Uh, what, what, what made you decide to do this? Um, well, React Native has always been something that I've been obsessed with, like the ability that JavaScript and React engineers can build mobile apps was fascinating. And then Expo came about and I became way more obsessed. Like they just took something that was already exciting and made it more exciting by making it easier. So consider DraftBit making Expo a lot more exciting and accessible to a lot of other folks. Uh, you don't have to set anything up on your computer, no Xcode. Uh, you know, once you are ready to leave DraftBit, you are more than welcome to uh, export your code and work on your app as you please. But if you decide to stay, we automatically build your stuff and deploy it and handle all the nitty gritty. Uh, so um, it was a problem that I was very interested in. I wanted to bring that uh, sort of experience to the masses to even more people than just developers. Most of our folks that use DraftBit are uh, developers or junior developers or learning how to code. Uh, but they are pretty excited about what we've been working on. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, freedom, both from worrying about Xcode and worrying about your code being locked in is uh, something that I always look forward to having. So uh, you're joining me today because uh, you are my resident expert on the uh, re, re, re uh, family of things. So uh, what is, what, what, what is Rescript? <laughs> So oh, yes, Rescript um, is the most underrated technology uh, today. And had they gotten their marketing down right the first time, I feel like it would have had uh, the adoption that TypeScript has had over the last couple of years. Big words. Uh, what's that? Big words, fighting words, I like it. Oh, absolutely. I'm so confident in that. Um, the only thing that Rescript really is missing is a community. But you're looking at a language that looks very similar to uh, JavaScript. It is uh, strongly typed, fully sound, right? Not like TypeScript where there's any. There is no any. Um, is that what, so that so you said it's sound? What is that? What is, is that what it means? Um, yeah, there's like a lot of technical terms around what sound means, and uh, really, what it means is. Um, Things in uh, Rescript can either be something or nothing at all. So it gets rid of this whole class of errors, right? There is no cannot read null of undefined or uh, whatever errors. Those just do null just doesn't exist in Rescript. Uh, and that's because it's built on uh, the shoulders of giants. Uh, and that giant is OCaml. Hmm. And OCaml, OK. okay. So there's no null, which is a weird concept to even think about coming from JavaScript. Yeah. But that means that by the time it hits the browser, it goes to the browser. I do know that it goes to the browser. Um, there's not even the uh, whisper of possibility that null is encountered. Yeah. Well, you know, like you will encounter null, right? But there's just like a different way of handling that, right? Like okay. the same way other languages have like guards or uh, you know, like unwrapping or whatever, like it's that same approach where uh, if you get some data back, right? Like that data will either exist or it won't, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so you have to just uh, make sure that that data is there, right? So- uh, But how do you, how do you, 
you're forced to make sure. You're absolutely, yes, you're forced to make sure. Uh, and there are things called, you know, I think we used to use a lot of them in JavaScript, like macros, right? Like the GraphQL macro or whatever. Uh, Rescript has its own thing, you know, again, uh, OCaml, which is PPXs, which uh, for example, like the GraphQL PPX will look at your uh, schema. It'll take that schema file and automatically uh, generate all this helper stuff to make that easier for you. So if you try to type the wrong query, it errors out. If you're missing a variable, it, you know, it errors out. If you try to send something that shouldn't be sent, it errors out, right? Like all in the compiler, right? Not when you actually make the request, right? Like mm -hmm. in JavaScript, it's obvious. If you try to make that request, it errors out. But what really, what Rescript is really doing is catching a wide variety of errors that you might make and helping you uh, and helping you prevent having those errors go to production. Does that make sense? Everything made sense except this magical three-letter thing you said, which is PP PPX is just macros. Yeah, they're more like macros, right? Like if you want to write your own Babel plugin and uh, shove it into your app, you could totally do that, right? Which a lot of which a lot of people do. Uh, if you want to explore some new feature or want JavaScript to do or look a certain way. Uh, Rescript has this idea of PPXs that do the same thing. So just a way to transform code from one state to another and then yeah. having it be um, sanitized or like reviewed by the code by itself. The yeah. compiler itself. Yeah, uh, okay. So, well, the, the most powerful piece of that is the OCaml compiler under the hood, which just knows everything about your code at any given time. And OCaml is one of the fastest compilers not only so in terms of uh, runtime performance, it's a little slower than Rust, but in terms of build time, it is treated in matters of milliseconds, right? Not even seconds or minutes or whatever. Uh, so, like typically, uh, you know, we've got over 1,100 or 1,200 rescript files. It takes about 10 seconds to compile all that and be done with. Our Ooh, bottleneck is jealous. the in the Create React app stuff, right? It's just it's so slow. It's painful. So you said that um, Rescript's built on OCaml. So I'm curious, like, um, I would write some Rescript code and I want to get to the browser. So like, what are those layers of transformation that makes that magic happen? Well, it's super simple. So everything runs through Yarn and NPM, like your normal thing. Like you would install Rescript through NPM. Um, everything is compiled. So uh, you're not really interacting with OCaml at all. Uh, you just basically download this like very small binary or executable onto your computer and it handles all the compilation uh, and builds steps for you. So for us, like we, you know, to install Rescript, you basically yarn add Rescript, you know, with the dev flag. And then uh, you add into your NPM package scripts like RE watch or RE, excuse me, RE build and you're done. Yeah, that sounds way, nice. That's it. Yeah, the way that you can sort of think about it, it's not quite the same. But if TypeScript was written in like a fast language like Rust, right, that would allow you to do things way faster. It's somewhat similar to that, right? So imagine Rescript is just written in this really fast and powerful language, and uh, it also compiles your stuff in that really fast and powerful language without you having to worry about using that underlying language at all. So. It's not constrained by the slowness of JavaScript, which TypeScript is. Um, and it essentially uses JavaScript as a compiled target to actually make it run in the browser. Yes. And it's not really a superset like TypeScript is, it's uh, JavaScript adjacent. Yeah, yeah, if you will, it looks very similar, like I was saying. Uh, and so that's where sort of the confusion comes from when it comes to reason and buckle and uh, buckle script and rescript. Uh, so I can get into that. Uh, yeah. So like that's one of the main reasons why I had you on because rescript, when I first knew about it, uh, went under a different name of a reason ML, yes. and uh, itself has come through layers of transformation that I am uh, curious both to hear um, what that story has been, which I think is tied into your whole. Uh, opening opus about the marketing missteps, but then also um, like what I lost my train of thought. No, the, the 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 transformations that the language has gone through, but also like where it is 
like where are we now as well? So I'm yeah. very curious to hear that uh, history lesson, if you will. <laughs> well, so where are we now? Use Rescript. Uh, okay. Rescript's uh, primary target is JavaScript. It's only target, right? So you mm -hmm. can consider it as a direct competitor to TypeScript. Um, cool. what, what was before that, and it took a little bit of time and energy from the community to figure this out, was ReasonML. ReasonML was an umbrella term for a lot of different projects that were taking place, right? Uh, ReasonML was uh, the OCaml syntax. It was BuckleScript, which was created by Bloomberg. Um, it was Belt, which was the standard library that would work on the client and the server, right? There were a lot of different things. Consider it almost like an incubator, if you will, of different ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you think back to like 2008, when uh, Jordan Walk first came up with React.js, it was actually written in standard ML before it was written in JavaScript. What's standard ML? Standard ML is like a subset of OCaml, right? It's like okay. a functional programming language. Um, so Jordan okay. was like steps ahead of where we wanted to go with terms of mutability and state and the ways that you wanted to do things, right? Uh, you know, like, if you think about this, we use, uh, we went through a stage of like flow, which turned into Redux, right, which was a Facebook tool, GraphQL, which was a Facebook tool, Relay, which is a Facebook tool, React.js, which is a Facebook tool, right, all very powerful tools that are still used uh, today, and there's many more, right, Babel was, you know, started by uh, Sebastian and ended up being consumed by Facebook, right, like all very prettier, right, like all these tools, right, so uh, what Rescript and ReasonML did was put all those under one umbrella and ecosystem, right? All those tools, Babel, pretty, like similar tools. Yeah, yeah. All okay. those things similarly, like that was like the goal uh, years and years and years ago, right? But in order to gain adoption of React, React was written in JavaScript and released to the world uh, in that form, right? What and a then, horrible mistake. <laughs> yeah, or or the best right? because now <laughs> we all have like React tattoos or whatever. <laughs> I, I'm not for yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right. So like, if you sort of trust all those Facebook tools and like them today, you know, I would almost ask you like, why not trust Rescript, right? Which was basically the best of every one of these worlds, which is how you should be building an app, right? Mm -hmm. Like the perfect. Uh, balance of mutability and network request and right like a user experience right it's almost uh, could be very similar to what Rome is supposed to be or want to be this like full experience uh, right think of Rescript like that right there's like one way of doing everything right like there's not a lot of time that I spend thinking about classes or functional components or mutability or not mutability or making a network request right or like uh, you know, like displaying a loading or an error or a success state, right? There's like one way of doing it all. And, uh, you know, that's what I have been taught. Uh, Rescript taught me to write better JavaScript, better, not necessarily better TypeScript, because we have to write worse JavaScript code to make the TypeScript uh, work correctly, right? Uh, we use TypeScript on our server. At least we used to do a lot of, a lot more of it. Now we've been writing more Rescript on our server. Uh, so I'm very familiar with uh, TypeScript as well. I don't want folks to think that I'm biased. We I use TypeScript as much as I use Rescript on a regular basis. And can't... you're not you're not biased, but you know what's better is what you're saying. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe bias wasn't the right word then. I just I'm kidding. I'm kidding. People that I don't use yeah. TypeScript. I use it every day. And let me yeah. tell you, uh, it's it's much nicer and easier to write Rescript. Uh, than it is uh, type so, so Rescript came about, so 2008, uh, standard ML was used to write the React prototype that came out as JavaScript. And then uh -huh. how does that go from there to the uh, Rescript? Yeah, so, okay, so ReasonML was this umbrella project, right? right Reason, yeah, yeah. Things was, uh, you know, like being able to share code truly on the client and the server or being able to build web apps with one pro, with a programming language that you could also build um, native Mac apps, right? Like Ken Wheeler, for example, demonstrated at ReasonConf uh, two years ago, uh, building a uh, drum uh, sampler machine that worked on the web 
and it worked as a native Mac app. And it was super fast too. There is no electron sort of slowdown, right? This stuff opens up instantly uh, because of how powerful, you know, like the, the OCaml stuff is. That makes so, sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so you have uh, ReasonML, which was, you know, an incubator for ReasonML itself, which is an OCaml dialect. And you had uh, Buffalo Script, which essentially it's like a, it's almost like Babel for OCaml. Yeah, the target was, so, so Rescript is basically Reason with Buckle Script, right? It's like oh. that one piece of the, Together. the, one piece of that umbrella. So it used to be that ReasonML was the language, Buckle Script was the compiler, and then Rescript was like, we are just consuming both of them and we are all batteries included now. It was before it was called uh, Rescript. You know what I mean? Like it was like, it was a bunch of, bunch of all these little things. So what happened was uh, Rescript went through a rebranding and it took the reason and it took the buckle script and it made the syntax like a little bit more like JavaScript and said, we are Rescript. Like we are moving forward with Rescript. Our compile target is strictly JavaScript. Come mm -hmm. to us to make your JavaScript better. Now- oh, So no native. No native, there's no native. Uh, now that, there's okay. the other end of that coin, which is, hey, you like OCaml? Uh, you want to write stuff that compiles to JavaScript and still compiles to native code. Uh, and you like all the like underlying libraries that power that. That is called Melange now. Uh, that's a little less popular uh, than Rescript, but it's, it's more of the folks that love the native side of things that want things uh, done a certain way. So very, very powerful tool uh, for a very, uh, very smart group of uh, folks. Uh, but if you're coming into the JavaScript world or coming yeah. from the JavaScript world, all you wanna worry about is Rescript. Yeah. You know, like stress that like Rescript is, Melange is uh, fucking sweet. Uh, not to confuse yourself with all of your things, right? Like, because we have to get rid uh, you know, like the confusion around, right? So yeah. I'm going to focus on the Rescript uh, side of so, things. But... So Rescript is Java script, hence the script side of things. We're just doing uh, Java yeah. again. So I guess you yes. can't like, you can't, you can't call it expressive script because that's already been taken many times over. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Okay. So that's, that's, that actually helps um, clarify a lot for me at least because I was confused. I'll have to talk to you about Melange. Uh, afterwards because i've really never heard that word before and my curiosity is beyond pete but i don't know if you viewers have the attention span to let me go on some uh uh diatribe down there but uh i'll save that for my own personal time um uh turn of thought okay so yeah so we have uh rescript is the javascript to make web applications you have kind of the kitchen sink included rescript is almost um most directly analogous to Rome, which is a new tool that's being developed, which is trying to have like ESLint, Babel, Prettier, like all the entire kitchen sink, all the knives just built into one. So Rome is to Rescript, which is built for Java script because it's eating the world or software is, or I am, I'm hungry. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. So then I have a few more questions for you, if that's okay. Um, uh, the next one is, uh, 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 what made you choose? I mean, I, I, obviously you are a fan of Rescript, but like, what was it that, you know, pushed you over the edge to use that at your company draft fit? Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, Jordan and Facebook have had a really good track record. Uh, so I decided to uh, try it out, right? It's like we were using React and Babel and Prettier and, you know, everything under the sun. So why not try the next best thing that, you know, they have been working on. Um, and so like, I slowly became very obsessed with it, right? Very confused at first, very fucking confused, uh, you know, and, you know, like it wasn't a walk in the park at the beginning because it's been through a couple of uh, cycles when it comes to syntax or whatever. Now we are past that point, right? Like, uh, you know, like I suppose you could argue that if Rescript came out today and nobody knew about it, it would be fucking game changing, right? But because of all the, you know, marketing, uh, you know, it's had, it has a storied past. It's not, 
It's it's been to June. Yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure. So I really hope I'm really rooting for a rescript. Uh, and let me tell you why. Uh, we started using it at Drafted as an experiment for on a couple of components. It wasn't forked, right? It was just sort of like let's just see what happens, right? Um, there was this library that also plays in really nicely called GenType. So GenType, we will automatically generate your TypeScript types for you. So if you are using a TypeScript app and you want to give Rescript a shot, you run that one script to install it, right? Like you just npm install Rescript. Excuse me. And the one thing that you can do is put a little thing above your component, like a decorator, that's, a, that's called GenType, and it'll automatically generate the types for Flow, for TypeScript, or all of them at once. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the most popular libraries that does this, Wonka, uh, which was written by Kittens, um, you know, it is a library written in script, and it has full TypeScript and Flow and plain uh, JavaScript uh, support uh, with just that one language. Everything is available for you. The types are automatically available. So um, we tried it, you know, and we tried a couple of components, like super simple things. I remember the first component vividly was labeled, you know, string and i was like that's cool that it already knows my typescript types for me uh, and it can just import them that's really cool um and then you know we started building more and then like oh that was pretty cool like all my graphql stuff is like super typed right now and i can't make a mistake when it comes to my graphql request. that's really cool right uh and then you know like oh prettier is built in and linting is built in and there's there's no argument over semis or no semis or single code or double quote like that's all taken care of for me that's pretty cool, uh, you know, and then it just kept going and going and going. Like there's one way to make our network request. There's one type of React component. That's pretty cool, right? Like, uh, and it just sort of kept evolving from there. That's wild, the uh, slow seduction. Uh, I appreciate that. When you said it generates the TypeScript types, you're saying that you made a label component in Rescript and then were able to integrate that with the rest of your TypeScript application and it was seamless. It was seamless. Yeah, yeah. And, gotcha. it's, okay. type and it's built right into uh, Rescript. So, so that's, the, that's the gradual adoption scenario. Yes. Yeah. Gradual Got adoption it. scenario is NPM install, uh, you know, like yarn run. And then, you know, you just add gen type and it generates those types of types for you. It generates the uh, DTS, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. Very cool. Um, that's. Always nice to have a gradual adoption scenario. So you don't have to blow up and start over from scratch, which is always a bad idea. Yeah, which uh, was sort of like what Elm was like, right? Like Elm, uh, yeah. what when I was exploring Elm, it was like I had to use, I had to do things their way and only their way. There was no escape hatch, you know. Which I think Elm has some really exciting things uh, and lessons learned, right? Even CoffeeScript before that, right? Same idea. Right, like you just kind of think back to your own experience of type of coffee script and then of Elm, and you're like, wow, Rescript got a lot of this stuff right. Nothing says that after your first two components, you ever have to use script again, but all your stuff will continue to work. You know, like you can compile that JavaScript code, uninstall uh, Rescript completely, and the components that you built in Rescript will just continue to work forever. Right, nothing will fuck with that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, I mean, to that end, um, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm hearing the biggest pros right now, which is, you know, gradual adoption, seamless integration, uh, one way to rule them all for all the things. Um, I guess, I guess the counter argument is like, what, what are some of the cons that you've yeah. experienced along the way? Yeah, plenty of cons, right? Like, obviously, the last couple of years has been, you know, like, a lot of this, like, uh, you know, marketing stuff, which we talked about, right? So we'll, we'll move on from that. So what are some like everyday cons? Um, like the community uh, has been growing, right? Like the discourse is pretty popular. Um, fortunately, because there's one way of doing everything, you don't run into that many problems. But if you were to try to stack overflow stuff, uh, you would run into issues, obviously, right? It's not as like popular as TypeScript, right? Um, so that was it, like for a while, I was sort of like relying on the Discord community or uh, the discourse community to help. And they're all like, that community is fucking phenomenal. Like even the Melange community and like the other reason ML umbrella projects, like they, 
everybody shows up to help, which is really great. Very supportive community. Uh, you just don't have like the widespread, widespread support everywhere, right? So that was a con. Um, understanding the whole idea of like something or nothing was a little confusing at first. Like, what do you mean something's either something or nothing? Or what do you mean I have to unwrap How dare you? <laughs> That was like a little confusing. Like, how the fuck? You know, like, <laughs> I remember vividly, like three years ago, I wanted to have a modal pop up when I clicked something, right? Like, it was like a list of things, right? Imagine, like, you know, you've got a list of names. And when you click that name, you have that person's face show up and like their last name, their bio, right? I'm like, how the fuck do I do this, right? Because I was like trained to do it this JavaScript way, sure. right? And now I've learned like, oh, okay, the JavaScript way is like prone uh, to errors, right? Like it's not necessarily the best way to do it. So after getting over that hurdle, uh, uh, you know, I understood, but you know, like the sum and none thing was like a little confusing. Yeah, um, I mean, like I, I, previous videos I talked about doing Rust, which has this similar thing where it's like there is or isn't something. And it's a whole mental model shift that um, makes you question life as you know it in some ways, but also yes. just how you ever did anything ever. Uh, so I can really yes. uh, feel that, yeah. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, you know, coming from TypeScript and having all these like bindings, right? People write these bindings in TypeScript and they're like, there's this whole thing, right? And definitely typed is this thing, right? Um, if you're coming from TypeScript and you're wondering where that lives in Rescript, you're going to be confused. You're like, what the fuck? Where are the bindings for everything? But bindings like the TypeScript definitions or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like all the okay. definitions for everything, right? And like having all that stuff up to date in this massive repo, right? That works a little bit differently in Rescript. Uh, Rescript is super powerful enough that most of the bindings that you need for libraries, you just end up writing on the fly, right? Because you don't need everything under the sun for that to work and Rescript won't yell at you if you don't have this or that typed, right? Like uh, what you give it is what uh, it will consume. Uh, so that was a little weird for me at first. I was like, okay, um, you know, like I'm used to just having all this stuff typed and I install these updates or whatever. Like, what do you mean I gotta do this on my own? But now it's like a, almost like a no brainer. Like it makes much more sense, right? Like the surface area is much smaller. There's much less errors because I'm not worried about like the entire low dash, right? Like I just like use like the function that I want, right? Like write a one line binding in Rescript and it all just like, oh, this consumes uh, a string and then spits a string out. That's easy. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm done. Uh, so I, I do like uh, the Rescript binding way and all those bindings are zero sum. So what that, tip, what that means is it doesn't generate any code in your JavaScript at the end of the day, it just consumes it and runs it, so. And there's no, co there's no um, size cost to those declarate, the type definition things. Yeah, yeah, uh, the code that Rescript, okay, so before I move on, going back to pros, does that make sense for the cons? Yeah. Yeah, those were the big ones for me. Those were like the big hurdles. Though, it, basically, the uh, marketing issues, which is coupled also with um, a little bit of uh, rocky roads in terms of selling to stability in terms of some things, which uh, we haven't delved into too much, but also like, it's great now, so don't worry about it. Uh, um, uh, the second one was uh, smaller community size where it requires a little bit more proactivity with getting support from not from the, you know, Discord or discourse. And then the last one is uh, uh, summer none, returning your brain for that. And along with that is uh, making um, the different way of making bindings to libraries to make sure that uh, it's just different mental model, different way of doing that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Those were the big cons for me. Um, but, you know, any other creating more the, research than ever. Yeah, I and mean, the pros, we've talked about some of them, but any others that you don't want to uh, be loath to mention or do we cover those pretty well? Oh, man, I think so. I think we covered most of them. Um, I mean, there are just experiences that are just mind blowing. Like for example, uh, Rescript and Relay uh, with a GraphQL server is just like, a, like the coding experience we all would love to have if we put the effort in to learn it, uh, right? Like Relay uh, was a, 
I was like this GraphQL client that uh, Facebook released that didn't get much usage because it required a bit of setup and a compiler to, to run alongside whatever. So Apollo came about and Apollo was a really great getting started, right? Like really great getting started tool. Uh, but in my experience, Apollo does not scale very well to a certain point, right? Like it is a great demo of like, boom, put these two lines of code in your app. You've got a GraphQL server, that's phenomenal. But what happens when your app uh, has a lot of things going on? Not in terms of scale of like traffic and people using your site, but scale in terms of features and how your developers are working on it, right? Like uh, it sort of falls apart up there, right? It sort of falls apart. Uh, no offense to them. I think they've been doing a phenomenal job. And I only think that after uh, uh, using Relay, or Relay is just, it got everything right and it scales really well. And the caching and the requests and the suspense are all figured out really, really nicely. Um, and fortunately, Facebook uses Rescript Relay internally. So they've got first class support on the open source project and um, everything just works. Like your, your skeleton setup for loading is set up. Uh, let's say your GraphQL query, and this is part of the suspense work, it's a first class citizen, it already works. Um, uh, let's say, for example, you've got uh, your query from GraphQL returns first name, last name, number of friends, and the number of friends query takes much longer to load. It will return, it'll stream first and last name, and it will show the skeleton for number of friends uh, for a little longer until it's ready. So it'll start rendering parts of your page before the request is complete. Uh, and that's all built in really nicely. Uh, how's, so that really to re uh, how's that related to the rescript? Oh, just the first class support of- and that's Oh, what I mean integration. So, Sorry, yeah. I'm rude. So Relay's got its own compiler <laughs> which compiles your queries, right? So it knows like exactly which fragments and queries uh, to update or whatever, right? All that stuff is compiled. And then Rescript consumes all that information. So when you pass okay. it around your app, you know exactly uh, what is required where, the right mutations, the right queries for everything. Um, and it's a really, really nice experience. But you can't call something that doesn't exist. Uh, you know, I kind of alluded to this in the beginning. Like you can't, uh, you know, uh, I guess there aren't, there are a lot of guardrails preventing you to do from doing silly things that you wouldn't have realized in the moment when you were developing that. Does that make sense? It's a true situation where the right hand knows what the left hand is doing. Like there's no real um, divider where the client is ign ignorant of the server. There's direct um, wonderful coupling <laughs> as you would really and prefer to have. Everything is very nicely coupled together. It's like, if I could have the number one experience, it would be absolutely Rescript uh, and Relay. Uh, and then even like uh, something that I've learned recently is like, with Relay, you have to set up your GraphQL server a certain way, right? Like with nodes and edges, things that you sort of forget about on the wayside, like that would be the most ideal setup for me, at least on the client. Yeah, yeah, a, a truly happy, uh, happy marriage, the, the true coupling. Um, all right, so I think I feel pretty good about Rescript right now, knowing that I can never have to utter the words reason ML again, which is, um, Nice, because my vocabulary is limited, and I like to make room for new words. So this mag magnolia, what was it called? Melange. Melange. Phenomenal project. Phenomenal project. Yeah. Uh, but if you're coming from the JavaScript world and you want to stay in the JavaScript world, uh, use uh, Rescript. Yeah, so, ignore it. I'm just a glutton for punishment is really what it comes down to. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, Peter, thank you so much for taking the time to come on and uh, school me in the quite literal sense. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, uh, you're at Drafted right now. You're hiring? Yes, we are hiring software okay. engineers. If you like Rescript or building low code tools or very challenging problems, please reach out. We are, we are hiring uh, software engineers. I'll include a link in the description below, um, especially if you are now a uh, newly converted uh, Rescript Acolyte, Apostle, I don't know what the word is. Uh, if you want to do <laughs> Rescript, then that is definitely the yeah. place to go to. We still use TypeScript too, so don't feel like it's a Rescript only thing. You know, we are a startup at the end of the day, so sometimes we are writing stuff. You got a G, GSD, right? Get shit done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do I start with the acronym first? That's incredibly confusing. All right. Uh, <laughs> 
Peter, thank you so much for chatting. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. Uh, that is the video for this week. And I will see you again in the next one. Until then, stay happy, stay good. Bye.